Would you all um, please remove your hat and bow your head in meditation? Mm -hmm. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful day and this opportunity to further our goal and the mission of building this city the right way. And we ask for your guidance over all this long decision we make. Your name, pray, amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, Madam Clerk, we call the roll.
will be required to pass substantially parallel ordinances regarding all the, all the different ordinances that run with water and wastewater within the city. We'll deputize or we'll swear in their, uh, their enforcement officers on that and, those, and then they will be coming to municipal court for the purpose of uh, dealing with violations of water and wastewater ordinances. Uh, just historically, uh, we did the same thing in Dunwoody and we have never had that kind of issue, but it, that is the purpose of it, to, to have the parallel ordinance. On the fire, we, uh, we anticipate that we'll have the, the same fire uh, IGA as the one that we will sign with Dunwoody. Uh, we're talking to the county attorney as to whether or not that, that IGA will have to remain in force in effect during the entire period of the next or the service delivery strategy agreement that's now in place, or whether or not there's a, a, a way within the present service delivery strategy for the other cities within the county for us not to have to have an intergovernmental agreement on that. We all think Jim had a question for you. Yes, sir. Um, I want to share with you our court. Um, does that cover if there's road repair and things like that? Is it an intergovernmental agreement? Is water to responsible for making those? Or if, we, how does that work? if they are if they are the ones who have to cut it up to get into it, they're responsible to put it back together. If one of their pipes blows up and ruins one of our streets, they're responsible to come to repair. And the other item, our John Street building code, does that conflict in any way with the Cap County code with respect to water and sewer? What we've done on the we're going to go ahead after after this. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chair. After Marie, uh, thank you. Well, she didn't say thank you to me this morning. She heard that something. But I didn't bring it up to her. <laughs> uh, after Ms. Garrett talked to uh, the folks over at, at, uh, at the county, we're just going to go ahead and readopt the county uh, building code. And for purposes of their their ability to carry over the uh, various kinds of uh, activities that they may continue to do under an IGA, we, we anticipate we'll work out some agreement on the carryover of the uh, various projects they're already on, and, and with the help of the Public Works Department and, or the Development Department, excuse me, uh, make a determination of where the cutoffs are going to be and where we're going to where we're going to do uptake and where the county's going to lay it, leave off. But in order to ensure continuity of those that they, they are going to continue to work on, we're just going to bring to you the county. We're going to, we'll, we'll customize the county building codes to change the names and bring it to you in a parallel to theirs so it'll work. We'll just amend that before the end of the, uh, the, end of the moratorium. Bill, I have a question. On, on both the uh, water and sewer and fire, does it make any difference that on the tax bill, those are broken out as separate line items and um, I don't know if they're separated in funds uh, within, within the cabinet administration? Does that, does that uh, bear on what our cost is going to be for them? Is, does that help them determine the, the real cost of the service? The, the cost of the services will be the, the buildings that they build to, to separately to the citizens. There won't be any further costs. But the, the whole point of us being engaged and involved in it is that there's a preclusion of counties from having ordinances within cities. And when counties do the services within the cities, we pass a parallel set of ordinances and through an intergovernmental agreement, or through the service, special service or the service delivery strategy that's passed every 10 years. Uh, we enter into agreements with the, the other sovereign to, to provide the service. What we're going to we'll do is we'll give them the authority to do the taxes. The taxes are parallel to what the taxes are now in the tax district. They get to keep those tax district taxes and they deliver the services and we give them a set of ordinance under which to deliver them. But we don't really have anything to do with it except for passing a parallel set of ordinances for them to work under and to provide them a court to come to. Otherwise, it would be 
It'll be seamless. Nobody will have any different building, no difference in services. This is Cab County employees delivering services just like they do deliver to them incorporate. And the cost basically is what we're paying now. The cost remains the same. In fact, in the IGAs, it says that we would get the same services as unincorporated, the same or better services than unincorporated. I don't think we'll get there. <laughs> Phil, I have a question. Yes, sir. When you negotiate an IGA, is it done on a yearly basis? Is it renewable? It, you can have intergovernmental agreements that go for 50 years if you want them. Uh, or two months. Or, or two months. Uh, what we're like in the case of uh, fire, that's, that's a service we're not going to be taking over, so is it necessary to have to be doing there in a year? Or? We're going to, we'll put, if, if we track the Dudley uh, model, which I anticipate we will, is it, it's a 50 year IGA with one year renewables, but unless you notify them, it's automatic renewal. They don't notify you. They notify you. It's the same. Everybody has a review on it. Uh, you can do it that way. In, in Gwinnett County, for instance, they just had a new. After the lawsuit, they worked out the fire. Uh, fire you. It's a it's a 35 year agreement. That, that so that's locked in. So you can't. If you decide to go into fire, you're not with the county. You're not going to get out in 35 years. Part of the reason and behind that for fire services. They have really huge capital costs in fire service, and there, there's a long capitalization period of any kind of equipment that they buy. So then they're always looking to lock in a period of time to do it. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, the next one after fire is police 911 and municipal courts. Uh, we're working on a meeting next week. We hope to have with uh, Mr. Stockner. I've already spoken to the uh, Chief Assistant County Attorney on this uh, to, to work on a police 911 and municipal court transfer. Uh, the 911 would be essentially the same thing as fire is right now. It, it'll be seamless. They'll just take the dollar and a half, continue to take the, the funds that are out, uh, allocated by state law to pay for 911 services. And they'll provide 911 service, services with the city. Uh, we are working with finance. He's, uh, uh, Chris has been working on some numbers to, to, for the police for our purposes of going and speaking with them on next week to, to see <coughs> where we want to start from in terms of our cost, that their costs are police services. So we're working to get to there. And then the other, the third thing is the municipal court transfer. Uh, we believe we may be able to do that with even without even an intergovernmental agreement because of the timing on it. <coughs> Since they'll be carrying services up to the 17th, where they'll be looking in to the recorder's court or the magistrate courts until that day, then uh, we think that we can probably stage this up. That when they that they're they're meant, when they start writing tickets, the bookends would be after the, the February 1st anticipated startup day for municipal court. So we wouldn't we would just start. Booking people when they start writing on our ticket books, they would just book in after the last month of February 1st when our start of that day, so we don't have to have any carryover for having the other courts to be doing any of the business for us. When you uh, say ticket books, does that mean they'll actually have a superfavorite ticket book in their car? No, the county will use their own ticket books, they'll just book with us, so you need uniform traffic citations. But we would provide ticket books, for, for instance, for code enforcement, a different kind of ticket. We'd also provide those for the we provide a set of ticket books for wastewater and water. Uh, we, would, we would also provide ticket books to the to the fire department for the fire marshals. Uh, so that, that, those things would be well, One thing about that on the ticket, we actually will have a notice of the court date on it with the address. Then we'll, we'll have to have some kind of ticket book for them. Will please. Well, the, the police will probably, what we'll probably do is what we've done in other jurisdictions, give them a sticker. Oh. It has to put a sticker on the top of the address on it. They're not going to be one to print ticket books just for our jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. so, so for the IJ for the police, they're going to know the board of the city. They're going to know what this one is called. And have the well, the boards of the city right now are, are pretty well defined, except for those few. No, they are. They're well defined anyway. Uh, there's not going to be much question. On one side of the lot is going to be unincorporated. The other side of the lot it's, it's us. Is there any plan to kind of train the officers that will be paying the county about? Because their zones don't necessarily match up with 
Yeah, that sounds like some press on the screen. Good luck. Thank you. So in this case, there's not a direct relationship between that line item on the property tax bill that is now since going to be broken out for police. Like, um, like they're doing with water and sewer and the fire and other things. No. Well, we, 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 I really don't want to get into our negotiating strategy right now. Well, I would think having that line item would actually we, we, define what the cost is per capita. You're certainly. Okay, good. All right. Anything else? Uh, Parks and Rec, the county wants to put together some uh, documents on that, and I'll wait to hear what they have from that. But, uh, that, that's, a, that's the end of what I have wrote for today. Let me just clarify something. On the, you, you mentioned the code compliance officer, and I know that we're in a moratorium on community development. So is it correct that there's, there's no enforcement currently going on of code compliance from the county no, no, no. in this month? No. There's a more, uh, whatever code enforcement they have done on a regular basis, they are continuing to do. There, we, we paid for code enforcement through the end of the year through our special service district taxes. Uh, after January the 1st, it's my belief that they will calculate between the 1st and the 17th what they believe their cost to be uh, for code enforcement, and they will be, they will be presenting us with a bill, as well as what, whatever their costs are on roads or uh, any of the other services. Community development, they probably shouldn't have any argument about parking this anything because most all of the community development is covered by, by uh, a fee based system for services. But you can, we can expect at some point in time to have a bill for code enforcement. We can expect to have a bill for, uh, for, uh, for public works uh, and uh, whatever else they determine that comes out of the special service district monies that they're, they're giving us services on. So in fact, there should be code enforcement going on. The report was made last week, or this week, code enforcement should be handling it. <coughs> they should. And should through the, at least through the 17th. I have a question. For so in essence, we have uh, one or two more business days Most likely these ideas are not going to be executed within that period of time. That's right. So we're going to be retroactively negotiating sort of their costs, um, our, our, our all, all the costs for paying for these services from first to what, sort of, uh, what sort of leverage should we have? Well, uh, first of all, we don't have to do any intergovernmental agreements uh, because there is, an under, uh, there is an intergovernmental agreement by operation of law under our charter, which is our transition period. Now, the, uh, the leverage that we have is, uh, is one that really, is one that nobody really wants to operate under, neither the county nor ourselves. And that is to go to court and mitigate other question costs on it. Right. You know, I, I have a letter uh, from the uh, chief Deputy County Attorney saying that, they, that the county wants to work in good faith to resolve all of this, which is, I thought was a good letter to get. Right. And, uh, and so I think that it's, if we all work in good faith to come to a, uh, a, a resolution that is fair and uh, balanced in terms of cost and delivery of services, and we can sign off on it, we're all better served to, to get to that place and have to go to the fallback uh, position of going and put in front of a, a group of 12 individuals and say, how much do we have? So uh, that's, that's, our, that's, that's the ultimate resolution. We, we always have services for the next uh, two years. Well, I, I certainly hope for the best because I think it would speak very highly of the Council's leadership if we can work out something that, you know, <coughs> quick, resolution of these IGAs because we're still part of the camp and we have a good partnership for a long time. But um, on the top
timeline standpoint, do, do you see uh, do you see any of these IGAs or any city services that we tend to go live with on January 17th? Um, are we going to incur, are you foreseeing problems with that time, timeline uh, of being able to, one, have those contracts negotiated by the 17th, and two, and then provide those services? This might actually be a read. That's not that scary. Let's speak to that. Okay. I have one other question about um, your role. Um, the CEO put out a press release about uh, a, a possible tax increase in which he mentioned that he, had, he anticipated, uh, put out a figure of like it was $2.5 million that the city of Brookhaven would be paying uh, at county for interim services. Three more periods. For what? Okay. Do we have any um, thoughts about that figure? <laughs> Not anything, but you probably want to share. <laughs> so it's just something that they put out, wasn't it? Yeah. It's really on the table or in real, real box. Okay. Just checking. Thank you. They're, they're sitting and trying to do right. All right. Things like library services and those kinds of things. Back on the, are, do those do it? Do we do intergovernmental with those, or do they just provide that kind of thing like that? Or go in courts and, and those yeah. kinds of things. Uh, the courts and jails are all all paid for. Um, I have to get back with you on the library services. Uh, I can talk about the library. Please. Um, yeah. The libraries are located in the city. Have the option of buying those properties. Five thousand dollars for the building plus a hundred dollars per acre. If you choose to do so, then at that point you're into an IGA for the to continue to provide the services. Uh, or if you choose to simply allow them to continue only to operating the business. Well along those lines, you know, right now in the, in the, in the library bond fund, there's there's three point two million for a quote new Brookhaven library. Can we acquire those funds? In the library, or do we have do, do they do they say yes? And do they yes? I mean, no. I mean, it's specific dollar park for general. Yeah, but that it, is, it is specific. That is beyond the realm of possibility. I'll be probably very similar situation with the park funds. We can say our position, and they'll say their position. But this one's a little clearer, though. Yeah, this one was actually spelled out. Good point. Then you know, they're, they're already in the they don't have to step out. I'll go back. I'll hold this here. Anyway. We'll look at that before you go. Okay. But there is money allocated specific from that bond reference for the program. 3.2 million. And I have one other question back on elections. Uh, it was my understanding that the members had a runoff election that was only in Berkeley.
States has agreed to provide us with free services in terms of the RAD, uh, which is, uh, I think it was three years. Jay, was it three years? I believe it was three years. Yeah, I'll check on that for you. It was three or five. I think it's, it's three with two one year extensions. There you go, three and five. This is Chad from the Jake Mortgage Heights. He wanted to be here to answer any questions. Uh, but they have agreed to provide us some great. Uh, there may be other things that we will need, obviously, that might not be free down the road. The TAN, for example, that was part of this RFP process. They're not going to give us an interest free loan. Uh, but they will make sure that the rates are competitive compared to other options that we'll have uh, for a full match rate there. Uh, they are, they're in short, they're wanting to put us on their resume. They want to make a play in the Atlanta market. And they see Brookhaven as a good partner to uh, work with them and, and start increasing their governmental exposure in the Atlanta So, not being a banker, let me just make sure I understand. They're in, we're, we'll ultimately have as much as 20, 25 million in revenue that we would be running through Chase. So, right. this is why it's attractive for them just to have our money in their bank. Having the deposits on hand is one of the ways that they measure their market share. Uh, that's definitely one of those. What are the odds we can get an ATM at the uh, municipal court? <laughs> I thought there was one. Is it there? I was reading somewhere that there is an ATM either at that spot or nearby. There's one in the Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we'll use that. I thought I read it somewhere. It may be the general service. Like, do they have a, a cafeteria or a, or a uh, it might be just, it's it's helpful to have an ATM at a court. Sure, yeah, that's outside or right near, like across the street. I, I thought I read somewhere that the property had something already. And if that's not the case, then we'll, we'll start with talk. I don't, I don't remember, but there is a courtyard there. Yeah. And a cafe, there is a central service area. And, and this court building is in the middle of the complex. They have them, it would be convenient. If they don't, maybe they would allow them. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll look into that. Either if it's not there, but within 100 yards, I'm sure it might be a place. I know there's criteria that you have to be getting somewhere, but you've got to look into that. Would be hard. Yeah, I'm sure it's there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think there's anything else. Yeah, I'm going to look into that. Yeah, I'm sure
they come to the point of like they're not going to give anybody free service ever. Uh, they can sit in Atlanta for many hours a year, um, and they just they charge for what they do, and they're not going to provide free service. Uh, I'm a little bit more hard nosed, and uh, I see the value of having our name on someone's resume, and I, in return, I say a little bit of free service that comes with that. Thank you. Good job. So, so you're comfortable going forward that there's no gutches in there and as we move forward and begin building up additional services and additional funds? Um, oh, absolutely. I, I think this is an excellent choice. Even, even though there were only two to choose from, the one, this one in particular is a good choice. And I think we had 10 to choose from, but still probably could look at the same situation. And we can move to someone else at any time? Absolutely. Well, so to that point, it's a, a three-year term. Is it does allow for a change before the three year, end of the three-year term? Yeah, there's that's sort of awesome. just about any contract we enter into is going to have termination provisions. Right. Um, you know, either for cause or without cause, we're going to be able to get out. Um, I will say it's you know it's a pain to switch banks, right. um, but. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is. We know that. That's why I'm trying to make sure I've got a better deal with the government. Yeah, but, but that being said, um, you know, they, they want us, and they worked really hard even before December 17th to, to start down this road. Uh, and I was expecting to get a proposal from them, and I received it. Does that include multiple accounts, like will the court have its own bank account? <laughs> the court will have their bank account, we'll have a disbursement account. And then we'll have a concentration account that kind of everything funds up into. And then as additional funds are added down the road, we can add additional accounts. Chris, would you mind if Chad said anything about this or has anything he's heard from us or concerns or what's not? Chad, you want to tell yeah. about this? Yeah, yeah. your role? Yeah, I actually manage the uh, uh, Georgia region, the Central and Southeast. But and we've entered into this as a good thing. Uh, you know, this is a great opportunity for us for expanding this market. Um, you know, growing rapidly in this particular space is important the government space. It is very hard to move your business from another bank, so uh, this is a great opportunity for us to start with something fresh um, and build it the right way. Um, there are no gotchas in there. Um, when we did this in good faith, uh, you know, our intent is to truly offer it for free for the full three years with one year extensions, so for the full five years of the contract, um, all banking services. And as we look at additional services over time, if there's things that you want to add, um, you know, we would negotiate this one off. Um, we're very competitive, um, and we're certainly not losing money. I mean, there's, there's you know, value to the balances. There's value for us to the brand. Um, so maybe one. It's not too good to be true. It's it's not too good to be true. Chad, what is your last name? Uh, Prescott. And that's good to know because there's two chats. <laughs>
I think also if we can resolve some of those bond issues.
big help to not only the community development department, but